Okay, it's 7 o'clock. Uh, that's the case. We'll call this meeting of the Dale Springs Planning Commission to order. Adjust your mics, everybody. Oh. Thank you. Hello, hello. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. All right, got it. Call the roll, please. Yes, Hello. Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Hazel. Here. And Chris Rubukin is here. Yes. For Adam Abraham. Thank you. And also present is uh, village planner Denise Springer <coughs> and representing Coolidge Wall, Jessica Brockman. Okay, thank you. So we have an agenda in front of us. Hopefully this will be a quick meeting. Uh, anything that needs to be added or deleted off of this? Um, if not, um, review of the minutes. Uh, this was a meeting I was not in attendance. Yeah, that needs to so be. So that roll call needs to be modified. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Also, also, I wasn't there, and I'm not mentioned at all. Now hold on a minute. So we. That is all messed up. So Matt, you were not there. Right. <laughs> Rose, you were there. No. No. Right. No, Rosie. Either. Not there. No. Susan. Was Adam there. wasn't there. Adam, Three no, I said meeting. sitting in for Adam was. So okay, Susan, but can we can we do something in lieu of approving? You can adopt. Adopt. You need to adopt. But wait, who was pr present on? This is the roll call. It, it was, was just Jerry. Susan, Susan, Jerry, and me. Chris. Chris. And yeah. Susan, Jerry, Chris. Okay, right. so I'm sorry, I just had Matt accidentally. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you forgot me. Am I on there now? Not there. She was not there. But, but it doesn't. doesn't not present. It doesn't grouping. say I wasn't She's present either. Oh, my gosh. You were so unpresent that you weren't even unpresent. I know. <laughs> <Okay>. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. Sorry. Jeez. So, Jerry and Chris, any other okay. changes? Uh, no. I don't have um, any. I have a question on the first page. Um, what purpose um there may need to be a special meeting about the cresco purchase did you say for what purpose if it's a, an approved use that meeting would be or do we not know because of the size of the building it's con it's conditional i mean the the it's a permitted use but it's conditional okay and they have if they get this um if they get this approval they'll find out the end of september and they literally have to like be like operational within nine months or something so they have to we have to move this process through so okay. they can build quickly so could we say for timing and but we conditional use and then she didn't explain she didn't explain it there okay fine that's fine but now it'll be explained because you just asked and then it'll be in the next minute so there you go. Yeah. thank you yeah this whole thing could happen so quickly we didn't even have right. all the information yep <clears throat> any other comments chris or jerry mm -hmm. i would uh, under the new business on the last page page nine it's the glass farm report possibly uh, fill that out a little bit so that people know that it was the Green County Planning Commission glass uh, farm report okay that gives a little bit more as to where the report came mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. and then at the bottom uh, Matt Reed is uh, signing off as chair do you change yeah, that, that for Susan yes you do yep and that's all the comments I have. Okay. So we only have two people vote yes, so can you, what did you say we can? So you can move to adopt rather than approve. Okay. And then you can all weigh in on that. So we have a motion to adopt, I move that we adopt the minutes of uh, June 12th, 2007. Chris, do you second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All abstain. Aye. Do you abstain? Yep. Mm. Okay. Communications. I don't think we have any communications. Mm -hmm. Do you have a um, public uh, entry, like it was in the paper? It's not out on the paper. Um, right after the council report. Oh, Do they have a. Who wants to speak? So, 
Yeah, yeah and citizens' comments right after the council report. Or you'll, or you'll no, it wasn't that. I just wanted the an agenda. agenda. Oh, oh. Right. And yeah, I wanted the agenda. And I didn't want to speak. Yeah, okay. But There's. I, I guess I wanted to wait until you've done some discussion about the DVD. No, you're welcome. I just don't know what y'all have in mind. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So then actually the, the, the proposed text languages are out there also. The same the ones that are published in the paper. Oh, and okay. But they have like a color. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for each of those subheadings, they, it's a public hearing, so there'll be a time to, for you to speak multiple options for you. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, next is council report. Jerry, do you have anything? Uh, the only thing I have to bring forward is the fact that uh, council will be discussing the uh, lodging tax on the 21st of July. Or, or August. Or August, excuse me, August. <laughs> August 21st. Right. Okay. And then you do have the legislation coming at this meeting on the 17th regarding, yes, I'm presenting this the to a council on the 17th, 17th of July. July. The pocket neighborhood. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is citizens' comments. This is, if you have anything to say about things that are not on the agenda, this is a chance to say those. Um, everything that's on the agenda, there'll be an opportunity, though. If you, okay. Uh, if there are no other citizen comments, then we'll push on to the public hearings. So we have, we're going to do a settlement for each of these, aren't we? Yes. Okay. Okay, so this is the language for the text amendments uh, to um, clarify and add detail to the pocket neighborhood developments. Um, the first one is that uh, the table there, 124802. Denise, do you want to? Sure. I, I did want to mention also that the, the review of any text amendments to short-term rentals, we were at the last meeting, I said we were going to be discussing that. That's been taken off the agenda for now. Um, we won't be reviewing it until council gets back with us on where the direction they're going with the transient occupancy tax. So it could be soon, it could be a year That's the now. definition of the short-term rentals? Is that what you're talking about? Anything to yeah. do with it, yeah. Wasn't there a question, though, about they did not want to do the tax until they had a definition or short-term rental? I've heard that. That's kind of come back around, but I've not been instructed yet right. to bring it back to Planning Commission. Okay. So, okay. So, um, at the last... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, one other thing that happened, I believe, uh, and we got it right at the council meeting uh, from... Uh, Attorney for um, Cresco? Uh, no, no, no. It was on the uh, the Dayton Street. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Buster family. The Buster Buster family uh, questioning whether or not uh, the action should have gone to BZA versus coming to planning. If I remember reading it correctly, what? but we didn't. No one told it was that. at it was at the table. That was was it at your table? Okay. That was that, Lord, then actually I asked the question right. for, for the writer of that communication. Do you want this to go out into the packet? And she said no, not at this time. So it circulated it's around cer among council to see. Okay. Did you, you want to kick it up? Kick okay. it anywhere else? There was a, it didn't really get any traction. Okay. There, there was a time period for um, filing an appeal. That's what I thought. That did not happen. But, right. You know, it, 
it, it did show up at council meeting. Okay. It's this one that I buy now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> so at the last meeting, um, I we finalized all of the legislation to take on to council. Um, as I was working on it, uh, council agenda for July 3rd was pretty heavy so we we're pushing it to July 17th and I was as I was preparing the legislation I just found some more little things that I thought let's take an opportunity and make sure um, we're clear on this because I uh, went back through old minutes to try to see did we touch on that did we not and I couldn't find anything so I just wanted to go through one more time and, and do that so starting with uh, table 1248.02 this is a minor thing but we had pocket neighborhoods under dwellings and that really, now that I looked at it, didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, the dwellings are actually describing the type of dwelling, whereas pocket neighborhood development is, is like, like, a, like a short term rental would be, it's, it's different. So we're just changing it on there. To have its own. To have its own, oh, yes, yeah. just above short term rentals. Okay. okay. Wait, so why is short-term rentals? It's what's under the, residential. What's the current definition of short-term rentals again? Well, we're not even looking at that, though. No, but just to... It's the I'm old sorry. one that, that, you know... That doesn't said, make any sense. That doesn't... That says a week or weekly or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so this was just... This is under the residential section. Okay. Sorry, I'm jumping oh, around. Okay. Okay, so um, any other questions for Denise on this table? Mm -mm. Okay, um, if there's not, then I'll open the public hearing. This is an opportunity if you want to address this change to this table, you can come forward. Um, and I will say that probably the meat of this discussion is the third item, that's those conditional use requirements. That's third division. Yeah. My name is Pat Seamer and um, I'm a senior citizen that is desperately looking for a small house or a small place to live. And um, we, I live on Allen Street and it's residential A right now. And it was my understanding that in residential A you couldn't have additions. Um, you know, you couldn't have people upstairs, a different family kind of thing. Is that true for residential A? And I'm wondering, is this what you're talking about? I mean, it's hard to understand your yeah. language here. Residential A right now, um, you can definitely have an addition on your house. So if you, if you say, for example, your children were living now in the main part of your house, and you add an addition that was attached as a mother-in-law suite, you could do that. Um, you could also do a, what we call an accessory dwelling unit, would, which would be a, a structure that could not be any larger than 800 square feet um, that could be located on the property as well. Lots of times those are over a garage or, actually, or they may just be ground level ranch. You nice. can do that. What you can't do is a duplex um, where it's like a two family unit. Okay. Um, you kind of skirt that with the mother-in-law suite because it's okay. all part of the house. Okay. Um, and the other thing you can't do is a multifamily. Okay. So you can't have multiple utility tie-ins. You just have one and then they share it. So that's kind of to keep people from just kind of in a de facto way subdividing their property. I you know, see. Um, I see. Um, but you can, like he said. I have half an acre. Oh, yeah? You have plenty of room. I, I would encourage you to come and um, talk to Denise about, you know, your property, like, you know, and, and see what your options are in detail, what you want to do, because there, 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 I'm sure, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do. Sometimes it's conditional, which would mean that you would come to the board and, you know, say, the, this is what I'm doing, mm -hmm. it meets all of these things, mm -hmm. and, you know, planning, the zoning official can help you do that. Okay. All right. Thank so you. So my name's Denise. Hi, Denise. Hi. <laughs> and so if you just give me a call. Okay. Um, and, and then the administrative office is up on the second floor. Okay. It's the planning and zoning office. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. But 
um, to talk a little bit about what we're doing with pocket neighborhoods. It's sort of, it's different than a PUD. There's, it's sort of like a, a, a built to use PUD. Like PUDs, you, you, that specific property, you make rules at every level and decide every level for that particular development. And the pocket neighborhood has all of those rules already set out and we've agreed on them and someone would come and request to build a, pe a pocket neighborhood if meeting all of those requirements. Is that a good explanation of what we're doing here? And it's, it's another opportunity for someone who has a piece of property to develop um, kind of smaller homes clustered off the street, sharing common open space and gardens and that kind of thing. And we're not Instead designing it specifically right. for one person or one developer it's sort of it's an option that may or may not ever be used <laughs> but is a possibility rather than sort of picking and choosing and doing this over and over again and which is you know more like spot zoning rather than we have little pocket neighborhoods that fit similar requirements all all of right. them Thank you. Okay, um, if there's no other public comments, I'll close the hearing. Any further discussion on these, this table change? Mm -hmm. If not, Judy, would you like to call the roll? Or actually, I need a motion. You need a motion. I move to approve this um, change uh, to this text amendment to and table 1248.02. Second. So, and just to understand it, are you adding that table or is this an amendment? This is an amendment. It's an amendment to, okay. uh, everything is an amendment to something we already voted in. So it's an amendment to table 1248.02. Correct. Okay, got it. Pelzel. Yes. Sir Buchan. Yes. Sims. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay. The next item is to amend chapter 126004 for principal lot use. That's paragraph D. In the in the uh, in 1260.04, we had added pocket neighborhood developments, um, and then uh, as I was looking at it, I realized that if it ha if we have under a PND, if you there's no way to meet every one of these criteria. Um, mm -hmm. The buildings are not under single ownership. The, um, the they may or may not be architecturally unified, I and mean, we kind of talked that about that a little bit. But um, especially, it's just not going to. It doesn't. It doesn't even work for PUDs. Um, it you know. It, that may probably when the zoning code was written, they, they were thinking about P, when you think about like a property like a, we have the PUD. Uh, for example, the CBE is a PUD now. It, this, as is written, isn't going to work either, because the um, the bu buildings are not all owned. I think when when this code was written, maybe it, they were thinking about millworks or something, where there's lots of different companies on site. I know that's what they did with um, 888 Dayton Street. They made, it was like a mixed use, but it was all owned by one person. Right. So now I'm wondering, do, do we add buildings are under single ownership in commercial industrial developments, but then again, we run into that same thing with the CDE, right. or would it be better in my second version on the next page, to just strike out all of this criteria and have it in there determined by the planning commission to be a principal use collectively. And that would just be determined by the planning commission, you know, as, the, so as these come up. So what purpose does it serve without the bullet points? Why not? strike all of it 
uh, because it says the planning commission is a principal or, or as determined by planning commission. So what? Well, the principal use for lot. What? Because what you wouldn't want is to have someone who came in, um, who let's say, for example, on Allen Street, she just wanted to build another single family home there. Um, this 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 is only this only applies to single family homes, right? No. If you're accepting all of these other things. No, this is saying like a lot or parcel shall not do, be devoted to more than one principal use or contain more than one principal building except for groups of multifamily dwellings, uh, approved mixed use developments, plant PUDs and pocket neighborhoods, or com commercial or industrial buildings determined to be a principal use collectively. In the CBE, for example, we have determined what types of uh, companies can be in that under I-1. Uh, the, the I-1 is called actually mixed. It's yeah, like but it's industrial district. It's so we've kind of determined by planning commission. So it's, this it's doesn't already, apply. It's already in the zoning code. Yeah. yeah. So this doesn't apply to that. What does it apply to? Uh, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm What's your question? I'm, I'm having a hard It just call. seems like it, there's a lot of accepts, right? Accepts, except for this and this and this and this and this and this. Like, isn't it better to say what it applies to rather than what it doesn't apply to? I'm not clear on your distinction. What we have the option between this wording or this wording, and uh, we have any option that we want. Correct. <laughs> but uh, under discussion here and presented before us are these two ideas, and I guess Denise, in discussion with other staff, is uh, looking at striking the listing of the criteria whether that is important to the zoning code or not, yeah. to have those list of criteria. I, ag I agree that they should be struck. I just don't, I can't make a decision about amending a, a principal use per lot part of the code that I don't understand. Well, the first Rose, the first line, a lot of parcels should not be devoted to more than one principal use. So you can have a car wash in a house on the same parcel. Or contain more than one principal building. Unless, unless it's one of these things. Unless it's your ag, or if you're multiple family, or it's mm -hmm. an approved mixed use, an approved mixed use a PUD or a pocket neighborhood, which are all, except for the ag, I mean, approved mixed use, that's something that goes to planning commission. Okay, more than one principle. PUD okay. comes to planning commission. Pocket neighborhood comes to planning commission. I think I tend to lean more toward the first option presented to us that lists the different following criteria in, in that it just defines better what the um, multiple buildings can be. Well, except, Chris, then you're, it, they're not applicable to <coughs> examples like, in town that we know of Like already. CBE right now, we've got Antioch. Um, Antioch is out at uh, the CBE, and now we're... And then you have another business there. Yeah. Okay. So, so you don't want to say they have to be Multiple owners of uh, yeah. different businesses mm -hmm. on a parcel of property. Mm -hmm. right. right, that's all one parcel, yeah. So that's contradictory to these bullets. Gotcha. I mean, you could take out the all, so it doesn't have to meet all of them. Based on meeting it could just the meet following criteria? A few of them. Or, mm -hmm. so, if you wanted to leave something like that, so you had something to go off. 
Because it says or down here after three. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's kind of contradictory because it mm -hmm. says all but then it says or. <laughs> That's, I didn't even catch that. Well, Denise, what, uh, maybe it would help to know, gosh, if you do know, where these criteria, how were these criteria useful prior to now? I mean, how did Planning Commission pick this up and say, well, here, here are our marching orders when we look at this. It needs to meet all of these things. Because I think when Denise and I were talking about it, we couldn't really find what that applied yeah. to or how it was useful. It seemed to be a carryover from writing the new zoning code that just got put in there but that really mm -hmm. hadn't been useful to Planning Commission. I think if I'm correct that that's where Denise was coming from when she thought this isn't useful to Planning Commission. They need to pick up what's required of a PUD or what's required of a PND or what's required but these aren't useful as such. Am I, am I? Yes, because you know, with the PND, it's, um, it already spells out common parking areas, how that has to work. Same with the PUD, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have some requirements there as well. What do you think, Rose? I understand what it says. I just don't know why it's there at all. Like, if, you know, it could be or commercial, residential, or industrial buildings determined by Planning Commission, and then <coughs> anyone, it would be determined, it would be conditionally allowed for anyone to have, I, I no, just I, don't I've know had, I've why. I've had a number of times, Rose, where it's come up where people wanted to do things on their residential lots, and I've gone back to this principal use per lot is why they can't. Hmm. You can only have one principal use on that lot. But if, if, if it was the principal use and they didn't have a home there, they would be conditionally allowed to do that. They could do that anyways if there was no home. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't know, like, if there's enough property on one lot to do that within, and you know, if there are no like size restrictions or zoning restrictions, I don't know why it has to be separate lots that you would do two separate things if there aren't other restrictions. I don't, I understand that that's applicable, but I don't know like why the if it's a single lot and there are no other restrictions, why someone couldn't have two uses on a single lot? Um, well, I know, for example, if you, if you take residential, for example, um, there is restrictions in here on the number of curb cuts, and then that, that person may very well have to share a driveway if they're going to enter at the back, it's, it gets pretty complicated. I don't. I, and there would be other restrictions on them, so they couldn't do it based on those like actual physical requirements for different differing uses and parking and you know setbacks and zoning and having conditional uses for different for uses in that well, then, zone. Well, then if we do that, Rose, then we're kind of rejecting the PND in itself because with the PND, we're saying, you know, you have to have a minimum of four. If you don't have any any restriction at all, then people can do whatever they want. I mean, then, then why have anything? I mean, are we not, That's not my, to... I mean, like, I, I'm sorry that I make these meetings so long because I ask that question all the time, but like, I, Philosophically, like I, if if there are real like material questions about why that particular use can't be next to that particular use, then it wouldn't be allowed somewhere else in the zo in the zoning code. This, per you know, it's brought up, and I, you know, like I'm not. We don't have to strike it right now, and I will. I, you know, I'll, I'll vote for the so second they, so writing let me, on let it. Let me understand what you're saying here a little bit. It, we went back and we took out the um, requirement on lots of like 4,500 square feet per unit. 
specifically because we said we don't have any minimum requirements on the size and we have the lot coverage requirements and we have the setback requirements but that's talking about one principal building on that lot I think that if you now allow something else to come onto that lot later it's I don't I don't know how you would you would have to change a lot of other things it would almost be a domino effect you wouldn't have you're not allowing it by not by by not disallowing it right here in the code there are other things that disallow in my opinion there are other things that dis already in the code that disallow these things for actual material reasons rather than just like there can't be more than one principal use except for these reasons I mean like if it's just conditionally allowed that you can have more than one person principal use in if it's commercial or industrial I don't know why housing isn't included in that I just I I fund you know it let, let me ask a question because when, when we talk about the exceptions for each one of them beginning with multi-family developments and moving forward is there a statement in each one of those that talks to the principal use? No, I don't think so. Gary, there are two and, and, pages and, and, to and, and, this, and, and, Well, I'm looking at, okay. you know, because you're, <coughs> the question I, I think you were asking is, why not distract the whole thing? Mm -hmm. and, and my question is, if the principal use per lot is defined <coughs> in each one of those exceptions, then why are we listing the exceptions, number one? And then the second part of would be if we just leave in a lot or partial shall not be devoted to one or more principal uses or contain one or more principal buildings, then <coughs> what would that specifically relate to? Jessica. There is a definition of principal use. Uh, the main or primary use of land or structures as distinguished from secondary or accessory use. So okay, so so we define that. Mm -hmm. So the first part of it. A lot or parcel should not be devoted to more than one principal use. So, so and, and that's defined. Mm -hmm. the, and, and use my, or building. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and my next question is then why do we need to list all those exceptions because in each one of those exceptions uh, principal use would, would be defined, am I correct? So you're saying as part of it, like multifamily, you get to have more. Yeah, in, in other words. There's more if, than one principal building. Or yeah, if, if we looked at the definition of multiple family dwellings, mm -hmm. within that there also would be a statement about principal use. Yeah, probably. Let's look. Okay, so. I, I guess that. Yeah. You're arguing for what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just taking it one step further to say if the de definitions are 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 there, then the rest of it comes redundant. So you're saying you can you could delete everything except for that first sentence Paragraph. up to the second comma. But but mm -hmm. that would be untrue. Th that's right. what that's what I'm but that's what that's asking. Right. Yeah. If right. there is specific language. It's probably better to have it in there. Have it in there. Well saying that a lot of partial shall not be devoted to more than one principal use and not saying where it applies or where it doesn't apply is 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 misleading about the places that it doesn't apply but if you say where it applies in this principal use per lot then that's what I'm arguing for it yeah I just, it, I don't want to miss it but I, I it's, it could be so vast I don't want to but I, miss I don't that. I think and I'm not is thinking really that fast? you're correct actually because you cannot separately meter 
You cannot have a separate curb cut. You cannot. I mean, I, I don't think that it is possible to have two principal uses on <clears throat> one lot unless you have a specific kind of development or exemption. So in a way to not, if you look at the flip side of it, and I'm not sure if you were here for it, but kind of the confusion with the situation where uh, Mike and David wanted to build and the, the Buster, Buster family was saying, no, you've got to make all these determinations first or it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And planning commission is saying, well, no, our zoning code says we can say okay first and then they make the determinations. It, it caused a lot of consternation. Yeah. I think if you don't hear say, you can't do this except in these specific instances as approved by planning commission, it might cause that same kind of consternation by someone who said, but well, I'm not seeing it. Doesn't say I can't. Yeah. And then and then you just create that anxiety and confusion. Okay. I think well, that's what's trying to be avoided, not that it's trying just, to be overregulated. Could you say on what's specified elsewhere in this code? But that's, I think that's, that's unclear. Said by I, having I the understand planned it. unit I, development and the PND, I think that you're saying it then. So you're you're saying that there's the one use and then except for these exceptions. Because mm -hmm. we've that question's come up before with folks who are they end up perhaps with an ADU, but they start out by saying, Well, why can't I? I have all this space and I have plenty of property and I could just build another house for my no, you can't. It's not permissible. Here are the ways you can work around that, but you can't separately meet or do a set. And so two. you kind of end up again explaining. They that just have to use that. But again, if it says it here mean. you can't do that because it's more than one principal use, it makes it simple for the zoning administrator in a way to explain it. And then she can move on to explaining here's how you can do what you'd like to do without creating another principal use. And often, I just, I just can't don't agree because. with that rule is my problem, but I'm not convincing anyone of that today, so we can move on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll write a paper about it. <laughs> uncle on that one. I think that, for, but my recommendation is is really the the second one is just mm -hmm. taking all of that, fall all that criteria out, mm -hmm. and having it be the planning commission considering it to be a principal use collectively. So for the PUD, it already says the different kinds of things that can be and an industrial mixed I1 PUD. Um, we've already def defined what a pocket neighborhood development can be, a, a multifamily, or if they want to be a PUD residential. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more, Rose? You okay? No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> um, any other discussion? We have a motion to. Um, do you want to close the public? Oh, I didn't open the public hearing, did I? Well, no, you. you <laughs> I don't, no, think, I don't think I did. Not that we're on the second one. Okay, if uh, there's some more discussion now, <laughs> it's the public hearing. Anyone have any comments on this change? Um, if not, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion. So move that we accept the uh, revised 1260.04 that deletes the uh, four criteria. You have a second? Second. Uh, Judy, call the roll. Z. Sims. Yes. Pelzow. Yes. Zerpuskin. Yes. Creed. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next one is uh, text amendment for specific requirements 126208. And specifically, we're looking at number J on the like page, next page over. These, all these other ones have already been agreed upon, right? Yes. Voted upon? Yeah, I didn't have any other questions on yes. those. Um, okay. okay, so. When looking at pocket neighborhood developments, they um, are often, often they're just little detached houses um, in, in a lot of cases, but not always. 
sometimes um, they do have uh, the duplexes as, as we have added sometimes they'll oh, look, I've read legislation now where it says the duplex duplexes are on a corner um, but I've also seen the row houses um, which they're single-family attached and so I went back through the minutes to see did we did we even talk about that um, and we didn't so um, I didn't know if we wanted we are allowing two family uh, in this but we never mentioned single family attached and so that was just a question that I had um, is single family attached allowed in R B R B and R C that it is okay. yes I mean, my thought was to just allow the same standards to be applied, except for the multi-family, you know, the apartment house, whether it be attached or duplex or single. So are, is the suggestion from you, Denise, to include in that, uh, under number one, uh, you've got the uh, can be two family dwellings and single family attached? Well, I mean, we, we limited to detached single family dwellings, but then we went ahead and allowed it to 50% to be two family dwellings. And we just never talked about single family attached. So, I mean. I think this, uh, do, the pocket neighborhood lends itself to the single family attached after I looked up the meaning of it. Yeah. Uh, just because it compresses the uh, the footprint mm -hmm. of the dwelling on the property in uh, uh, what's uh, Park Meadows is mm -hmm. an example of that and, and I think it has worked well there to have uh, the single family attached type so I would suggest um, da, 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 then it can be two family. So you're saying up to 50% can be two family dwellings and single family attached? We could say or that. Or single family attached? And or single family attached? Sure. But yeah. with, do we need to say that but 50% are our single, our single family? to be unambiguous. If someone says, well, 50% are two-family and 50% are... Uh, so how many single single, single uh, units do we want? Is that what you're suggesting? So are you actually, is what you're suggesting that uh, up to 50% of the total num of the total dwellings can be either two-family or single-family attached yes. dwellings? Okay. Mm -hmm. Should we make that and or? Because uh, by having two family dwelling or single family attached, it excludes mm -hmm. one or the other. So yeah. I would say and or, okay. and slash or for the two family dwelling and the single family attached. Okay, so it can be either two family dwelling and or, or single family attached. Okay. okay. Are, are you saying that to say that it could be a hundred percent of either? No, she's just saying you can have two family and single attached family. In the fifty percent. In the fifty percent. Oh, in the fifty percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So then uh, the next one, accessory structure shall be allowed and must not exceed sixty six percent of the primary dwelling unit. Okay, so okay. so this is the thing. In in the code um, it has to do with um, it, you, you take into consideration all levels of a, of a house to make that determination up to 800 square feet. I didn't know if we wanted to just make it the footprint, which would be under gross floor area, that the accessory structure 
That's the sum of horse. You don't want to say crucified. Before it goes, the sum of the horse. Oh, I, oh, I thought that one. I okay. Um, for, where was the one? Huh. I thought I'd looked that up too, and I must have. Okay, so we don't want that gross floor area. Um, I thought there was one too, but it's not like it. Is this the footprint? Is what it's based on? Gross floor area now in the code is the sum of the several floors. Okay. Yeah. So, but normally you do it, most people do it based on the footprint. Right. And then as part of that, um, it says accessory structures cannot be located between road frontages and dwelling units. And so I just feel like I needed more clarification on that. Are you talking about that? We're talking about that primary, the main road? Mm -hmm. Okay, because in some things that I read, they, because these might be the back of the house that's facing the street, yeah. they often make them put like some like facades on them to make them look like they're not really the back of the house. Um, it's more of a design thing. And, or, and um, so we would just then say that anyone, by saying this, that anyone who decides to have a dwelling unit at the front is going to automatically know they're not going to have an accessory. Right. I mean, I have a bigger question about this, and that part of that is just is this property line boundary business with accessory dwellings? We only have one property. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, so how do you and know yeah. So what what I understand and is if the developer doesn't make the imaginary boundary lines, Green County Engineer does because they then tax each unit based on those lots, those individual lots. So those lots then in, will enable us so to... So Green County's not going to tax the homeowners association? No, they do not. They don't tax the common area, the community room, the swimming pool and that. Really? All right. They're not, according to David Graham, when I had to go back and reread that, he said that that's a law, they're not allowed. So then essentially you're using the setback space upon the county lines that they've drawn if the homeowners association or the builder did not. Yeah. For the so there actually has to be a setback from the community space too. At that point. Right. Or if if the lot lines are drawn sort of around community space. If, if what you're saying is they don't tax community space, then the lot lines would be sort of drawn excluding them right mm -hmm. yeah so you're going to have your you'll have your overall property <coughs> we'll right. have our setbacks that follow the code usually 20 feet or something is where you can start to do something except for like the driveway entrance and then however they set that up those lot lines will be determined by green county if, if the developer doesn't do it himself Herself. But our our code wouldn't use those lot lines. Our code would use our lot lines, right? You, for the individual? No, for for lot line boundaries. For the development, use the original yeah. lot line. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if I mean, someone wants to build accessory dwelling, I would use the lot line boundaries for each they, lot, for each individual lot, each person's lot. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's setbacks there because too. There's setbacks there too, yeah. But so if you can't, then you couldn't. Yellow Spring really. Zoning Code would use lot lines that only exist for the county tax. I thought this whole thing was about sort of being able to blend those separate lots and be able to do more things without those requirements. Well, then I wouldn't want accessory structures at all because I think it could be a nightmare. It could be a nightmare where people place them. It could mm -hmm. be, you know, they could end up being too close to an alleyway. 
if we don't have any control over it? I mean, we would have control over it mm -hmm. in, you know. Just on the perimeter. Just on the perimeter. That means you could go three yeah. doors down and build a building behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and you could, you could encroach your neighbor's build, sort of your accessory, could be mm -hmm. kind of sort of in the back of their yard, if they call but it But it wouldn't be. Well, if you remember the definition, right, there's shared spaces and there's spaces yeah, that are private, us, yeah. private for each, yeah. each structure. OK. These are for the private yeah, but houses. Yeah. Okay. So you still have a big common area. And there's still going to be a that's common held in building. building. Would it be easier just to eliminate the accessory structure? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Given that there's not going to be that much space available, but it would be nice, you know, for have a garden shed out behind your house. But right. um, I can see with the density that we're talking about, it may be problematic. <clears throat> it would seem that that might be able to be gotten around in some sort of creative fashion, though, if you, for example, built the equivalent of a closet on the back of the home, for example, that opened out and was a small shed, but it wasn't detached and it didn't encroach and it did, I mean, I would, you'd think a builder might be able to get around some of those strictures. I mean, I guess you'd have to weigh that possibility against how much regulation are you able to do from sitting at this table. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to say that someone can't have a shed in their backyard, though. Yeah, I, I mean, no one's a, going to yeah. use this if we say you can't have exactly. accessory dwelling or accessory I mean, it might structures. be after the fact. Yeah, the person so. who builds a place is not a gardener, but the person who buys it is like, I don't know, I'm I thinking need to store my shovel somewhere. Park Meadows doesn't have them, do they? Unless it's uh, the, like, there might be at the end of the driveway a. Um, a shed that they use in okay. common, but I can't, I don't recollect having seen any um, any accessory structures at Park Meadows. So, but our access, if we didn't allow them here, would they be allowed in the common area? Yeah, as part mm -hmm. of the development that's approved. Because what Park Meadows has are garages with their dwellings. And right. people use the garages for their storage of garden utensils and stuff. Is this gone to council yet? Mm -hmm. no. 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 We voted on, you guys voted on it once though as is? Yeah. This is cleaning up some of the stuff, the language that Denise is going to be presenting. Mm -hmm. I might have a planning here too. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh. Well, um, I don't know. What we, we, we've got a couple of different ideas floating around here. Do we? Um, I mean, is there a desire just to eliminate them? I think we can eliminate them. Because I think the, the concept is, uh, you know, the higher density of, of housing on a unit of property, different configuration, and that if the homeowner association wants to have a shed for the garden tools that everyone can, uh, that's not going to work. They're going to take my rake? I don't think so. <laughs> but, you know, that there's common areas would have that, or, or like the suggestion of the, uh, uh, an attachment on the back of a dwelling unit to serve as a shed. Right, or there could be a, some kind of a series of sheds playing as part of the initial development in the common area. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see how the common area 
allows accessory structures, but maybe I'm missing the language. That would be under the homeowners association, so they would be able to they define have like that. A community room, or yeah, they could have like a garden storage thing. That would be. It's interesting. We're such a rural folk. You know, if you lived in a city in an apartment building. Yeah. Down in the basement would be your bike and everybody else's bike and the laundry room and the storage right. stuff and things. I mean, it's it's not it's in any way is. considered odd that your stuff, along with everyone else's, that you can't keep in your apartment is stored in a common area. It's not unusual. Yep. We're unused to that concept, but I think what the mm -hmm. PND is trying to do is to pull some of those concepts into that communal living notion in order to prioritize the living space and obviously it's your baby you can do with it what you will but I think that's the notion is rethink your idea of communal property of right. personal property of what you have to store or keep right next to you right. I could see the HAOA having uh, owning the garden utensils and you know everybody sharing them given what we're saying then Number th I'm looking at number three where we're saying accessory drilling units are not allowed in a yep. pocket neighborhood. But well, we're talking but about accessory structures. structures. We're talking yeah. about two. So, I mean, by taking, if we take that out, then it does, that's kind of, that doesn't even matter now. Taking that out, then we're going to have to have we can strike three. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Three doesn't, yeah, you're right. doesn't matter. But I think we should strike two. So, well, could we just well, could we say accessory structures like shall only be allowed as um, a community room or uh, communal I, I storage think area? I, no, I, th I think that's like the this. HOA's. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, okay. That yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. I don't think we need to put the language or restrictions. All right. We'll just strike two and three. And I'm so help me understand why you're straight. No, why are you taking three? Out? Yeah, I think we ought to say accessories, structures, well, or dwellings. Um, so, what are you, are you saying just to go ahead and say accessory structures and accessory dwelling units are not allowed? Yeah. Okay. Make that number two then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Accessory dwelling units. So, so you're changing DHA two two. Use plus. All right. And use not permitted. And you're striking J3. Right? Yeah, or three becomes two. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Can we move on? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, number four spells out the common open space under the control of the HOA. Um, and then we had in there prior to final plat approval. Um, the developer will provide a set of conditions, covenants, blah, blah, blah. This isn't a PUD where there's a preliminary meeting and then a final plat approval meeting. I um, wondered if we should just change that line or just say prior to uh, approval. Okay, um, so for all of our, 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 just for clarity, can you walk through what you see this approval process being? A, a level B site plan review. So that's a meeting with you. That meet with me probably, yeah, for the staff, yeah. And then here. Yep, yeah, and then. And then you're done, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so the question is, do you want them to have all those covenants and all that homers and association? Is that the same as a PUD? No, PUD mm -hmm. has, more twice. has two meetings before planning commission. And, and then they have to go on council. It has to be right approved by council. So, see, two me they have a, a staff meeting, a preliminary meeting with you guys. Right. Do you think council will approve this as is if they don't get to see it? If someone gets approved by us to do this? Good point. <laughs> well, they get their bite at the apple when it comes to them as legislation. Pardon? Do they get that? that no, I know. I'm just wondering if. Jerry thinks that. That's a good question. I mean, like, we, it would come back to us. 
I mean, do we? Can I cover the mic and speak? <laughs> no. <laughs> How are you? I don't think that works that way. Dog, dog, any, any, anything is possible <laughs> to give him that. <laughs> that's that's a, yeah. I mean, it, you know, we can. Yeah. Of course, we should. You know, um, recommend what we think is best, right? Yeah. You know, as long as we can this was supposed to be easier than a PUD. It's, it's supposed to be easier than a PUD. That's our goal, yeah, that's right? Why, that's, that's why, why it's we're, yes. we're, we're trying but, to get this all out now. But I don't, I mean, like, but it's, it's easier because you see the requirements. You don't have to pick and choose from each requirement. It's, I mean, I think it's kind of... Yeah, and there's less places for planning commission to put conditions on it as well. Yes. Because the PUD, we can essentially make if they meet change. If they meet all of these things, then they don't have any conditions yep. and it gets approved by us. But it's a public hearing and so anybody can come and, and say the piece. And council will know what the requirements are because they have all this stuff. That's mm -hmm. what he's, I think that's what Matt's saying. Right? Yeah. There's not as much that they wouldn't know about. Yeah. But could council come here, I mean, even if they did know about it and they didn't like it and they came here and said, don't do this, we could still approve it and council mm -hmm. wouldn't have anything to say about it. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that's kind of a lot of power to be giving a volunteer board, <laughs> honestly. That's what you do. That's what BZA does. And that's part of why you do it and council does not do it, is that if council became involved in the minutia, no one would ever vote for a council member ever. I mean, it, it simply it would be just the most hated people ever in the world. I mean, there are some things that council really just says, no, we no, know this sure is your job and we let you figure it out. And there's a reason for that. And honestly, it, it isn't. I mean, I think you're thinking of it as, geez, uh, they're not going to like it if we're making this decision. No, they actually are going to like it if you make that decision. And, and that's why they review the legislation prior to saying, it's okay for you to do it in this manner. But once they've reviewed that and said, this process will work, you get the power. You, you really do, and it's really okay. Where's, uh, and public comment then is, is done at uh, when it's at planning commission. The hearing here, so we have mm -hmm. a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if there's a large vocal outcry mm -hmm. against a design, yeah, then and it's then up to us to say yay or nay. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and that has absolutely happened. I mean, there are things yes. that oh, yeah. is absolutely shy now, never to return. I think mm -hmm. that's my biggest concern yeah. mm -hmm. is, is if you you know that I just want to make sure that planning commission has that option to to either you know. We, it is a conditional use, which means it's a, it would be a permitted use, but we have to also think about the people around mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and either find a way that they can modify it or if they're not willing to make the modifications, then you wouldn't go. You wouldn't yeah, it. so it'd be up or down. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's conditional use, so we can we can place conditions on them also. Mm -hmm. So if we there's a hue and cry about some aspect, we can through negotiation or through just dictate to them that they're going to deal with this differently to help address some of that. Can I ask? Um, has the citizen who brought this idea to planning commission been back to a meeting that I wasn't at to mm -hmm. discuss this? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, I think Ted is the individual who yeah. brought the concept yep. forward, and, and he's not been to a meeting that I've he been to. He came back, well, he was here for um, another, another, another per, the Wise yes, Brewery, sure right. and so he did, he uh, did stay yeah. for that. That was two, um, two meetings ago? Yeah. I mean, he yeah. saw most of the, I guess I was there. Finished. Mm -hmm. But for example, um, Home Inc. has brought their a proposal. Mm -hmm. And they would like to do either a PND or a PUD, depending upon what exists in the zoning code at the time. They'd like to do a PND. So, it, I mean, it's certainly get, get, garnering some interest. <coughs> um, I don't think it's going to be you do it and it's never looked at again at all. I, yeah. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I just wish there were more, there was more input 
at this stage in the process. Yeah, I know. I know. Because, yeah. you know, I agree. Uh, like, I feel really uncomfortable. I know you guys voted on this how it was. I feel really uncomfortable voting on this, honestly, today. And I know we've worked on this really hard, but, like, it's a it's a it's such a hypothetical. And... Well, you never know how it's going to shake out until someone yeah, tries so to use yeah. it. Use it, right. But I think, Rose, we, we have that problem in general. Yeah. We're always trying to think about unintended consequences and and all this this world of options of how this might be applied. And I know a lot of times we come back and say, boy, that didn't work out right. We need to change this part of the code. And we do it. Yeah. And sometimes it's kind of the school of hard knocks. But it, 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 I mean, it, that it just it that feels happen. silly to like per particularly presenting this to council is something that's not going to go through them. Um, I'm not opposed to that. I just wanted to talk through it a little bit. I guess. I think my biggest concern about this is is not having someone use property that is going to upset other people. Yeah. Um, and I and I made a little copy here of something that as a good example of that. If you could essentially and you pass this down, you could do three more houses on that. Oh yeah. And I mean, what does that mean? What impact is that for the other people yeah. on that road? Right. <laughs> and I think that was one when we mm -hmm. kind of looked at there were very few this is areas a, in, right? in town yeah. <laughs> where it would apply. Right. No, isn't that house that sold for eight hundred thousand dollars or whatever? Mm -hmm. Did it sell? It has it sold yet? I think it did. Did it really sell for that much? So, I'm sorry. Did it? it has it sold? It has. I just thought it couldn't wow. possibly sell for that much. I know it's outrageous. So I mean, you know, when someone invests that money, that amount of money into something, and they think they're getting that land as well, that's why I was a little hesitant about RA even having this PND and RA. Well, but the person doing it would be the person who bought that property. Right, I'm right. talking about the neighbor that's saying if it's the neighbor that wants to do that, and then they, the, that right. person bought that property thinking they were going to have all this acreage. Or any of their neighbors doing it. Well, that's why you but, have a public yeah. hearing. You know. mm -hmm. With the objections. Right. You know, and quite frankly, gosh, did my neighbors think they were going to get five kids living next door to them? Holy cow. <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, I, 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 I try to keep thinking to myself, does the person want to go through that they have to all of a sudden relinquish it to a HOA where there's a board? All of a sudden, it's not going to be in their power to control that land anymore. Yeah. 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 You know, so there's that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And only 50% can be a rental, which kind of that takes that equation out. So there are some things we put in there. Yeah. So, okay, well. So, um, okay, so to go back to your number point, four, number four, which is now number three. I just, so I thought that the, shouldn't the developer come with at least a, a, an idea of what those. I think. I think there should be the idea of the conditions and the covenants and restrictions should be presented to planning commission. But yeah. I don't know that the legal ease has to be hammered out. Yeah. Maybe right. maybe no, there's a is there a staff approval after that meeting maybe with some of the details? Could it well, you know, it's very interesting because I don't even know how we. I mean, with PUDs, how do you remember? I mean, I know I have a, P, a PUD. Um, Covenants and restrictions and <coughs> such for like Thistle Creek. Yeah. And it just it's just kind of a basic say it, they will create a homeowners association. They will do this. Blah 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 blah. Well, I think that gets reviewed by the attorney. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they update their homeowners association conditions, covenants, and restrictions, do they have to refile it with Green County? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they update it at all. I mean, I guess it's better than <coughs> us having our own little recorder's office here, right? That's not what we want. Uh -uh. I mean, you can record anything at Green County, and then anyone can access it. So it's a great, you know, utility. Uh -huh. it's, 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 not, it's not very expensive to record something at Green County. Depends on how long it is. Yeah. Well... I, 
Why don't you just make it just prior to approval that the developer has to provide that set of blah, blah, blah that we yeah. look at? And that P Planning Commission looks at? Yes. Just because I'm thinking that as you were talking about the conditions you might need to impose, some of those may well be contained in the covenants, yeah. restrictions, et cetera, yeah. so that you'd need that. So you need a final review, review by staff or? I don't know that you'd need the final view, but that you'd need to see what they were covering and then when you applied your conditions, you could say, so we're going to hold them to the condition that there will be uh, green screening between X and Y. and the zoning coordinator is going to make sure that that all happens. We're attaching it as a condition. I mean, it just seems logical that you'd have that information in front of you, at least for information about what the developer was yep. planning. If, if I were a neighbor, I guess I'd want to be able to see that in a packet so that I'd know yeah. exactly. what, wait, yes. you're going to build your common area yeah. three feet from my garage? Yeah. You can say prior to the level, or during the level B site plan, they have to provide a yeah. draft of. Yeah, during the site plan. Yeah. A draft. Yeah. And then you can still say if you want that the village has to. Yeah. Yes. Have final approval. Yeah, I think we need to have both as in there. So a draft before planning commission and final <coughs> approval by yeah. staff. Okay, and then um, we had talked about um, making sure that an engine, we have an engineer present at these types of hearings. Uh, we have a contracted engineer just to make sure because this yeah. is a bigger development than what, you know. Um, and, but there was um, one of the things that it doesn't really spell it out in the level B site plan review. It does talk about surface water. But I'm wondering if there's some place in here where we should insert um, that they, these, I'm going to pass these out to you guys. This is in the planning um, code. Just a long time. Um, in the planning code, there's um, design standards. And um, I'm wondering if there's somewhere in here in, under other PND standards. Just making a, a general statement that um, that they that the that they need to follow the design the applicable design standards of the plan. Twelve point six. This is a subdivision, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, no. I know. <laughs> but is is it kind of a subdivision? I mean, can you just say for the entire lot? I mean, we do, there, Why don't we say right here in your bullet number six okay. about a level B site plan review okay. um, to say including um, a stormwater plan. Insert that in there somewhere. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that would be the best. Including a Designed by a license, prepared by a licensed engineer, same criteria. As specified in the 122606 design standards. Mm -hmm. As specified in 1226. Okay. And the only other thing I could think of, we don't really, we didn't talk about any roads in here, but we did talk about pedestrian pathways. Mm -hmm. um, and it does have other considerations not addressed specifically, which have the requirements of the Yale Spring Zoning Code. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I'm wondering if we need to say anything else about that 1226, because it does talk in 1226 Sidewalks. about uh, if you do an alley, if you do a screw. But this this applies to all undeveloped land, right? Yeah. So it I applies. Mean, it would still apply. Then we could just yeah, should apply. Yeah. It, I mean, so should I just say um, shall follow the requirements of the Yellow Springs Planning and Zoning Code? Yeah. As yeah. We get around that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Planning and zoning. Because I'm assuming they would develop a plan that shows sidewalks and paths and alleys. Yeah. And they, have they have to do that. They have to do that for level B. As part of level B, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Is so that it? Then? Oh, wait. Oh, and then which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Um, 
Okay, you start on six. On six. Um, Which is, you mean seven, seven that's now six? No, no six, six is now, now five. Yeah, got it. We took out. Okay. Got it. A level B site plan review, including a stormwater plan as specified in 122606 design standards. You got that. And then Ben's what about she put? Planning oh, and then and uh, and number eight, I call it other cons shall follow the requirements of the Yellow Springs planning and zoning codes. Maybe make that plural. Codes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any further discussion? We can have uh, Judy read these well, back to us. Uh, not number five, we kind of skipped over. Yeah. Drawing units may be individually owned and will rent it with no more than 50% rental. Right. Okay. And did we put a minimum on the number of units? Is there a minimum on the number of units that? Yes. Yeah. And what does that mean? It's uh, 14 in, in per acre in our... Is that max or minimum? Oh, minimum. No, oh, four. Sorry, four. Four, four, four. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, and we didn't have any requirements on how big... You know, the thing, the only other thing that kind of was weird was in, in everything that I read about these, these houses are usually like between 800 and 1,200 square feet footprints. Mm -hmm. And we didn't put a minimum. <coughs> so... They tend mm -hmm. to lend themselves to being a little bit smaller for affordability reasons, for um, other reasons, I guess, for use of the Well, what do we do to our minimum? We don't have a minimum anyway here yeah. in our code, so I guess we just talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've got rid of it elsewhere, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, why, so that why is here. that one. Right. Yeah. Right. Judy, do you want to try to <laughs> walk through these and see? Okay, <clears throat> so PNDs are limited to detached single-family dwelling units in RA, in RB, RC, up to 50% of the total of the total dwellings can be either two-family dwellings and or um, sorry single-family attached single-family attached. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and then. Number two Strike. is being struck in its entirety, and then uh, number three, you're saying the uh, it's stri striked. Uh, AUs no. and nope. AUs are not oh. permitted. Right. Oh, okay. Number two becomes. Um, number four, which is now. So three. number two is accessory structures and AUD mm -hmm. shall be. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. So in four, which is now three, mm -hmm. there's great confusion. So the, I didn't get anything just, there. They have to bring a draft of the CC and R's to the level B site plan for planning commission okay. to review. Okay, was that where you said it's level B, B plate sand, sled, uh, site plan review? Provide draft yes. of CC and R's with final approval. Yes, by staff. Yes. Okay, we got mm -hmm. that. So six, which is now five, is uh, the stormwater design standards must include a storm plan design as specified in twelve twenty six point zero six design standards. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then seven. seven, you did not change, am I correct? Which is now six. Yes. Right. Okay, and then A was other considerations not addressed shall follow requirements of Yellow Springs zoning and planning codes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion? Did you, did you, you open the public, public hearing? I have not yet. That's next. I think it'll be short. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> if there's not, then we'll open public hearing. Anyone has anything to say? Um, if not, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Um, last chance for discussion. Um, if not, um, we have a motion. So move that we accept. Uh, I closed it. I'm staying. 
Are, if, if you, are you moving to approve these changes as here discussed? Yes. yes. I thought so. Do <laughs> we have a second? Second. <laughs> okay. Call the roll, please. Sir Buchan. Yes. Sims. Yes. Pelzell. I abstain. Okay. Reed. Yes. Okay. Judy thought it was going to be a short meeting, so. Yeah, and then the very last thing is, this shouldn't, shouldn't take long at all. I, w I was no, wanting to strike um, dwelling pocket neighborhood development because I realized that um, it's, not, it's a plan. It's not an, uh, oh, a, dwell, a dwelling. Not a dwelling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we, all, we do have pocket neighborhood developed defined, and it doesn't mention detached or anything like that. So I just want to strike that. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're still keeping, we are striking cluster housing, but I want to right. just not add dwelling PND. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion? Got it. No, I would agree with that. Makes sense. Yep, I agree too. If there's no further discussion, we'll open a public hearing. The chance to say, have a comment about this. If not, we'll close the public hearing. And do we have a motion to accept these changes? I move to approve the text amendment as uh, discussed. Second. 4.03 definitions. So you're moving to remove the definition of cluster housing and add the definition of common open space, adding the definition of dwelling PNDs. That was Is that before. correct? We're no, just we're taking no, we're, we're, we're just striking out. number six. So all so your dwelling. Yeah, all we're we're going to strike out. number six. So you're moving to remove the definition of dwelling Pocket from... Pocket neighborhood development. Yeah, it was Indeed. open kill. <laughs> Andy. Okay. From 1284.03. That was already done, right? It's not a dwelling. That, yeah, we already did that yeah. one, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So sorry, and that was Chris, you made the motion. Yeah, this yes. is direct number I six. I seconded. And Rose seconded. RP, got it. Sims. Yes. Pelzel. Yes. Zerbuchen. Yes. Reed. Yes. Thank you, everyone. I awesome, appreciate lovely. that. That's a lot of work. Hopefully now it can oh, move forward. Great. I know. Okay, um, next yeah. item on the agenda is uh, old business. Do you have something you want to add to this <laughs> discussion, Denise? Uh, with on the public hearings, are you going to add something? Oh, I, with this, I was just going to say that, you know, I hope that people can make the next planning or the next council meeting. I'm sorry, I can't. July 17th, where we're <coughs> discussing, where I'm going to present this. Okay. Today. And I could use anyone who's up to date and familiar with this to be there. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and be there. Okay. And I'll let you know for ever, any reason or whatever it gets tabled and I don't do it July 17th. I'll okay. let you know that too. And then, Rose, you can ask them directly about whether they want to uh, have the veto. Yeah. They can change it at that point and oh, accept that's anything, that's anything they want, right? Anything right. Mm -hmm. or yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Old business is a vote for vice chair. Were there nominations? Yes, indeed. There a long were. time ago. There were two. There were two. Susan and me. Yep. <clears throat> Did you have campaign, a campaign speech? Do we, uh, we need to wait for Susan to be here, so you guys can. I mean, I feel like debate. we should we like if Susan won right Susan. now, would that be acceptable? It, it I think that it would. It's July, and so <laughs> if you wait till Susan's back and then you vote, and then it it'll be like that's what you get September, right? and then it'll be about time to vote again. Yeah, so, I think it's okay. I really do. She just doesn't get a vote. She just doesn't get a vote. Okay, so there's two people who have been nominated. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Susan really doesn't want to do it. I know. And that's so, why I, and I will I've got a motion that Rose <laughs> is, uh, would be appointed Rose, the vice chair of the Hey, just vote on each person. Why don't we do a motion? Huh? Why don't we do a motion? Well, you already have two on the table. Yeah. Were, those, were those motions? Yes. 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 Uh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Let's vote. <laughs> so you call the vote on one, then you call the vote on the other. You can do them in whatever order you think might serve your purposes. <laughs> okay. 
Um, <laughs> can we vote on the nomination for Rose Bazell as vice chair? For RP. Um, you want to call the roll, please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so those in favor of Rose Pelzell as vice chair, uh, Mr. Buchan? Yes. Yes. Pelzell? Can I abstain? You can. I would like to do that. Uh, Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. Oh, thank you guys. Susan's going to be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's it. We have some agenda planning, maybe. Um, mm. There is a discussion mm. of maybe short term rentals, probably not. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, text <laughs> amendment on height of accessory structures. I'm surprised it's not already one established. There is a question that came up. Okay, accessory structures can only be 18 feet, um, but oh. 24 feet if there's an ADU. And um, BZA asked the question well, why don't you just allow it to be up to 24, 24 feet, feet if if the intention is to i don't know what's an adu again remind me well it, this oh. that's accessory dwelling but this was just on accessory structures in general oh so that someone could technically have it at a height of 24 feet if somewhere in the future they might want to make an adu okay i can do story garage it's unfinished yeah, yeah. So. Okay. So that's something we can discuss later. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. That's it. And then the comprehensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Well, we can certainly. Do, are can, there any um, conditional so. use applications going through or not right now? Okay. So yeah, I really would like to start on that comprehensive land use plan. I just feel like mm -hmm. maybe it's going to be something that's going to be more in the fall and. If nothing else, I mean, your agenda item is to discuss yes. the process. Yes, right. So we can certainly do that. Right, and I, you know, I think and, and as part of that process, comments. I think that maybe, um, uh, you know, we can always get a little bit of help from Green County Regional Planning, not to like take over our thing, but just to give me maybe some guidelines on how to maybe structure it. I know they do these for other communities. Who else is going to the Green County? Thing, my Bob. Oh, and I got oh, this for meeting. I've got them actually out of the printer. If anyone wants a flyer, I it. yeah, I RSVP to them, and I haven't. Chris, you went last year, correct? I, I went at the last one that they held, and I don't know whether I'm available at this time. Did you feel that it was worthwhile? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's very worthwhile. I mean, anytime you have a body of people who are doing similar tasks, talking about what they're doing and, and find out how different it all is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just was wondering that it seemed the focus is on agriculture, whether that was apropos that much for us. We don't have an ag agricultural no. zone. Yeah. Livestock in residential areas, though, could be pretty darn interesting. Yep. Yes. That is, if yes. someone else is going, it would be really great if I could get a ride since my car will be in Huber Heights with my partner. So. Okay. So let me know. Okay. I'm actually dealing with that. I'll put your phone number. Uh, uh, we have a motion to adjourn, please. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Did you know you can't oppose a motion to adjourn? No. You know, I read actually you don't even have to have a motion to adjourn if you've covered the entire agenda. The meeting's over. So if I have to work that day.